A while back, we checked out Hori's Mario Kart Racing Wheel Pro and Pro Deluxe for the Switch, which gives you an immersive arcade-like experience from the kart racer, and they're a blast to use. Love these things. Since then, Hori reached out to us and sent us this massive box, so now we're moving on up and testing the experience over on the Xbox via their latest racing wheel with force feedback, which really bumps it up a notch. Welcome to A Game From A Box, this is Sergio AM, and in here you get all your cables, including two power cords, Type A and Type I, and the controller cord includes a quick release feature, so if someone trips over it, it'll disconnect at this point of contact instead of pulling down the wheel or console. Then we have the clamp with screw, the foot pedals, and of course the steering wheel itself. So the wheel is full size with a slick black and gray design along with a 12 o'clock stripe at the top that marks the center position of your wheels. Although it's mostly plastic, the build quality is still great and feels very durable. The sides are wrapped in this dimpled rubber that give you an awesome Spider-Man like grip. And then on the front we've got all the same buttons as the Xbox controller along with a profile button which we'll get back to. Behind the wheel we've got nice and clicky metal paddle shifters. Over on the back, we've got all the ports and connections. Underneath, we've got rubber feet to keep it in place, and M6 mounting holes to use it on a stand. Finally, inside we've got the two motors that pack a punch and give you that immersive force feedback which we'll test out in a bit. Now the three-piece pedal unit doesn't have the most exciting design, it's, it's pretty basic, mostly plastic as well, but I really wish they went with metal for the pedals, just like the paddle shifters. At the bottom, we've got channels to route the cable three ways. Same as the wheel, M6 holes to mount it on a stand, and rubber feet to keep it in place, but no carpet grip, which means you're going to have to dig your heels on the base to keep it from moving around. The pedals are nicely sized and easy to reach, the springs on here are pretty good, the gas is very smooth, the brake has a lot of resistance which helps with control, but the clutch could use a bit more tension since it doesn't give you the best feedback. So the ideal way to set these up is with a dedicated stand or cockpit. I'm not at that level yet, but I do have a standing desk, which actually works out pretty well since I can adjust the height to suit that of the chair. The clamp that comes with it is very simple to attach. It tightens into place with a screw. It's got padding on the feet to prevent any damage. And it holds the wheel very securely in place, which trust me, you're gonna need. But before we go on, I want to thank our sponsor, Private Internet Access. Private Internet Access is the world's leading no-logs VPN. PC Mag, Wired, Lifehacker, and plenty of other publications recommend it, plus it has a solid Trustpilot score. This VPN encrypts your connection and hides your IP address, making it look like you're connecting from someplace else in the world. This way, you bypass digital censorship or annoying ISP throttling. Plus, you can stream your favorite content no matter where you are. It also gives you access to plenty of other features, and it's excellent at blocking ads, trackers, and malware. They also have a rock solid no logs policy. Now let's be honest, many VPNs claim they don't log your activity, but private internet access has actually proven this in court multiple times, which in turn makes them pretty trustworthy. With thousands of VPN servers, private internet access is available on pretty much every platform, including Windows, Mac OS, and mobile apps. Just one subscription protects up to 10 devices simultaneously, and customer support is available 24-7. So if you want to stay safe online, it's time to get private internet access. Use our link down in the description below so you can get access to an 83% discount. That's less than $2 a month and you also get an extra 4 months for free. Plus, you're protected by a 30 day money back guarantee. So please check them out because supporting them helps support us. So when you connect everything and turn on the console, the wheel will auto calibrate which happens each time it powers on. and you can then navigate the UI with the controls. To see how it performs, we tested it out on a lot of arcade and sim racing games, none of which I'm good at. And yes, I've seen all the Fast and the Furious movies and even that one movie with the dog and the racing thing, it's really weird. The list of compatible games from their site is pretty large, you've got all the usual suspects, but titles like Rocket League, Nickelodeon Kart Racers 2, The New Hot Wheels Unleashed, and a few others won't work with it because they don't support a steering mode, so make sure to check beforehand. 
Now what sets this wheel apart from the previous versions is the force feedback you get from those quiet yet powerful dual motors which help you feel the car's grip on the road. It's a bit hard to describe until you use it. At first it sounds like a gimmick, but after spending some time with it, I found it really helps in game. As you drive, you have a sense of the car's weight, especially on turns where the counter resistance gives you a sense of whether you should be turning harder or adjusting your speed. Then with the rumble, you can feel the terrain, be it in the bumps on the road or the gravel you're sliding into. All those detailed cues help you quickly react to keep your car on the road, which in a sim racer is crucial. And of course, because details matter, if you want to go further, you can download their device manager app on the Microsoft Store to tweak and adjust all sorts of settings. First, you can remap just about every button on here to your liking. This works really well for something like remapping the paddle shifters to accelerate and brake in case you want to use the wheel without the pedals. Next, on the wheel, you can adjust output range, dead zone, sensitivity, the force feedback strength, which I like at the highest amount, as well as vibration. Then, you can also adjust the sensitivity of each pedal individually. Finally, you can save up to seven profiles, all of which can be accessed on the fly via the profile button on the wheel, with each having their own assigned LED color to tell them apart. All right, so most of the games we tested are available on Game Pass, which is insane when you consider how expensive these can get. And we started with high speed, loose physics arcade racers. To cover the highlights, in Need for Speed Heat, the wheel handled really well throughout, even at top speeds, but some of those turns are pretty intense on the wheel compared to an analog stick, and crashing felt over the top with that rumble. Next, in the gorgeous Forza Horizon 5, the default sensitivity was way over the top, but after knocking it down, I found that with the wheel, I was netting way more clean racing points than with just the gamepad, especially in cockpit view. Now, as for sim racers, which I'm terrible at, the wheel went into full effect in Forza Motorsport 7, where I could feel everything, including subtle details, which led to a more reserved driving style that kept me on my toes, ready to react. In Dirt Rally 2.0, the dark soul of sim racers, I cranked the force feedback to max strength and that made it so much more immersive, counter steering felt intuitive, and you can really feel the grip of your car on every corner. So after trying out Hori's force feedback racing wheel DLX on those titles and more, I went back to their Mario Kart wheel and it's a bit shocking just how empty it feels in comparison. You're honestly losing a sense that adds so much to that experience. So if you're looking to dip your toes into sim racing, based on our testing and the fact that you get a three-piece pedal unit, paddle shifters, and the dual motor force feedback, I can easily recommend this as an awesome mid to high range starter kit. It gives racing games a sense of immersion that makes them so much more fun to play and makes it very difficult to go back to a gamepad. It's hard to explain how transformative it feels to play these games with force feedback, but curious to know what you guys think of it, so leave your thoughts down in the comments and let's talk. If you dig the wheel and are looking to pick one up while supporting us at the same time, we've got affiliate links in the description below, and we've also got more Xbox gear coming up on a hauled episode towards the end of the year, but up next, we've got a lot of Switch OLED content that I hope you'll stick around for. Literally, those boxes have just arrived this week, so excited for that. Once again, this is Sergio AM. Thanks for liking and subscribing, and I'll see you for the next box. Addy. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so the event failed. She goes, hi. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to help us out, you can do so by clicking that thumbs up button. And while you're at it, why not subscribe for more content? It's free. We also love to hear you out. So please leave a comment down below or talk with us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm Sergio IM, and I'll see you for the next box.